Hi, it's Bernie Goldbach on the 21st of August 2011, looking at Sunday Times, Sunday Business Post in my back garden. I'm an American in Ireland, but I also live over on Google Plus as G plus dot TO stroke cup gold. And I got a blog at insideview.ie. You might be listening to me on audioview.fm stroke top gold or watching this on YouTube stroke top gold. Your choice. Thinking about guys like Ian Bailey. A full page story about him, but Justine McCarthy. He was accused, he's been accused of killing the French film producer Sophie Toscan de Pontier. Very interesting issues behind this case. Most of it revolves around this idea of circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence can convict much easier in the, under the French rules. And um, the pull quote that comes out of the article is there are many facts that can be used by the French that might not have been used by the Irish. Some of it might not be obvious when you read about Ian is that uh, there are a series of journals that he would have written, notes, diary entries, just real personal diary entries, and when they're read into court by the French, they can be really damning. A note that I would have from some of my students in a media writing course is, watch those journals, watch those diaries, watch those Facebook entries, because they can really be taken out of context and, uh, and used against you. An article called America's Tech Raid makes it also into the Sunday Times. James Ashton points out the face of um, a temporary born software genius who sold his firm to Hewlett Packard for 7 billion euro. And it's Mike Lynch from Carrick and Sure. If you don't know what this program does, then that means you don't know autonomy. It has a product called Idle. Big, big favor among corporate customers because it can locate a needle in a digital haystack. And if you, if you work with unstructured data in email files, you'll know how important autonomy services might be. You know, the Packard runs ERP services, and I think the SAP foundation stack that they use would be well served by it. Interesting way of energy filling household expenses and how it bears out. The story is by Lorraine Weymouth, and she writes in a news section of the Sunday Times about how you might build a house out of wood, uh, make it make the walls half a meter thick, 40 millimeter of insulation with door frames insulated airtight, and you get yourself a house which actually might make more energy than it consumes. Interesting article. I work with a guy who's in that same boat. Doesn't have a passive house. Uh, has a house with active energy saving techniques, and geez, it he rarely spends more than about 200 euro a, a winter for heating. Theft.com, big article, maybe three pages in the news review section of the Sunday Times. And it's it's about it's a part of a release of a book that's coming out, pointing to a big problem that law enforcement officials have when they try to penetrate the dark side of anonymity. Um, I circled something inside the story. For the moment, it remains perfectly possible for anybody accessing the internet with requisite knowledge to mask where they're coming from. The story unfolds in the book called Dark, Mar dark Market. Cyber Thieves, Cyber Cops, and You by Misha Glenny. Interesting read. Also interesting in terms of what's going on in Google Plus when they're trying to shut the gates on anonymity, make everybody use their real names. I don't know if that's if this kind of a cyber criminal story has motivated Google, but hey, it does fit into the space. In the Sunday Business Post, uh, probably it is the Sunday Business Magazine of the weekend for Ireland. So interesting people and faces I know. Dick O'Brien writes about Shane McAllister, founder of Mobinode, one of the firms selected for this year's Endeavor program. Fourteen new high technology companies will work inside of Endeavor, kind of articulating themselves better. Reality Bites says Adrian Weckler, if you don't know it right now, you probably need to get wised up to the fact that you're going to get to have a computer at some point over the next two to three years. We're running with an iPad right now. We'll have a Barnes & Noble new color, and the cycle will go on. Brian McCraith, who happens to be the professor and president of Dublin City University, writes about his reform agenda for education in the comment and analysis section. He gets a half page. He points out something that actually works in the States, I think. National ranking in a subject, percentile-based approach such as used by U.S. SAT scores, might be a fair indication of relative performance, basically a way to to make sure you're actually dealing with the top students in an area of Ireland. Now, he has a whole lot more 
in the way of how he'd revise the higher uh, second education agenda. I like this thing about an e-portfolio that he would like to have people have inside the paper. Some other interesting things about media and marketing. I'll zero in on this one by Catherine O'Mahony. Of Ireland's 2 million web users, 1.4 million are using the internet to read newspapers. <laughs> that means a lot of people aren't going to buy this newspaper. They're going to read it online at 6 o'clock today in Ireland on Sunday, or they might get clips from what I'm doing here. You would find out that I'm recommending using your time, not necessarily to read the paper, but to buy a gadget like this one. The Lumix Panasonic DMC FT3, best of breed in the waterproof category, put in put out by the in-gear section of Tech and Net. And if you're also interested in going local and using that camera, go right down the street from where I am and buy your food locally at the Tipperary Long Table Producer. The Tipperary Food Producers are having an event, Rockwell College. You'd walk by some of the back garden that I have on the way. Tipperary is in bloom. Looking at things like the bees for the bee for biodiversity. And up my camera's up to it. You'll see the bees flying into different different flowers that are in full bloom here in August. Don't have more than about six weeks of blooms left, but doing well. And everything that attracts the bee is good for biodiversity. Even the marigolds that Ruth hates. See more of my photos at flickr.com, struck photos, struck Irish eyes. Catch up with me on Twitter at Top Gold. Thanks for listening. It's Bernie Gowak in the back garden of Cashel, saying bye for now.